These are the four best pieces of career advice that I ever got, which changed my life. <laughs> What's up guys? Welcome back to the channel. My name's Mike from Job Ready English, helping students get hired. You got yourself a job. Breaking down the interview process for world famous companies and talking about careers and all that kind of jazz. <laughs> If you like the channel, don't forget to click subscribe and like this video. Today's video is going to be a little bit different. It's going to be a bit more personal. I know that normally I'm breaking stuff down or explaining to you how to do stuff based on my professional experience of being a career coach and running career coaching companies since 2013. Today, I actually want to talk to you about something that's quite personal to me. It's based on a question I've been asked quite a few times which is best pieces of career advice. And I've got four things for you and I hope you enjoy them. Number one, just focus on being better. This actually came up from a book called So Good They Can't Ignore You from Cal Newport, which was, I've, I've read this book a couple of times. It was a really good argument against this idea of following your passion, following your bliss. Um, so what a lot of people kind of I would say get locked up in is that they just think, oh, how can I do this quickly? How can I hack this? How can I shortcut this? And the truth is, if you just focus on being better or being so good that they can't ignore you, then people will notice you if you're constantly getting better and better and better. And a lot of times when people talk about overnight successes, when you read into the backstory, they will have practiced and failed and tried for years and years. And, um, you know, a lot of there was a good scientific study about famous composers who didn't really release anything, at least for about eight or nine years before they started to churn out for music and most of them for 10 years. I'm not saying it's going to take that long, but I can assure you, if you focus on being better, it makes a real tangible difference as compared to the candidates who are trying to be, you know, smarter or find a shortcut. The second piece of advice which came from, actually, I read this in Tim Ferriss' Tools of Titans. It's a great book. And it comes from one of my favorite cartoonists, who is Scott Adams, who writes Dilbert. I used to love them. I got the books when I was a kid, and I thought it was a really funny, like, satirization of office life and what it would be like. And basically, and I'll read you just a small part of it. And he says, if you want an average successful life, it doesn't take much planning. To stay out of trouble, go to school and apply for jobs you might like. But if you want something extraordinary, you have two paths. One, become the best at one specific thing. Two, become very good, top 25% at two or more things. And he goes on to, was he being the best at something? So for example, I would consider myself a writer. To be the best writer, I'd think of JK Rowling or James Patterson, somebody of that ilk, right? Big deal. Um, I'm not saying it can't happen, but that's going to take quite a lot of work. But to be the best or top 25% at a few things is actually quite easy to do when you think about it in the world. So the things that I chose initially was writing and then public speaking or just speaking, communicating verbally. And the third thing was entrepreneurship, which in my mind, entrepreneurship is the ability to make something from nothing or money appear from nowhere, essentially to create products. And I have done that with a couple of different businesses. I think Job Ready English is my third formally registered business. And for me, that's a really unique blend of skills. Actually, you see that blend of writing, speaking and entrepreneurship being mirrored by quite a lot of YouTubers. That's genius. So that's another good thing to think about. And it really doesn't take that much. I mean, I've been writing now for about 10 years, speaking and coaching for eight or nine years. And actually the original reason why I got into coaching was because it's a really great way for me to practice my communication skills, to practice uh, flexible problem solving. And a good way, the original reason why I joined the company where I was at and helped scale that to about a million pounds a year was it was, it was a way for me to practice entrepreneurship, but essentially to gamble with somebody else's money. And that's the reason why I did that. Number three, find out or figure out what's easy for you and hard for other people and how you can make money from that. Now, for me, that was writing. So I first learned to, I would say, write effectively in terms of to communicate. When I was about 24 or 25, I was watching a podcast the other day between Scott Parr, Scott Parr, Scott Parr, who was the founder of The Hustle. They got sold recently for about $27 million. 
and Neville Medora, who is a world-class copywriter. And Sam Parr was talking about the fact that writing is one of those weird things because everyone can write. So basically you think you're good at it, but like everyone can run, but not everyone who's the same bowl. So the idea is how effectively can you use writing to, as Neville would say, communicate information from one brain to another brain or to get you to do something that I want you to do, like to buy something or to click something, that kind of thing. But what I figured out when I started writing was actually when I was... I first started coaching, I would write these case studies. And they were quite long. They were sort of like 10 pages long. I found that really easy and people were really impressed. They really helped the candidates. They would be, I was using them to help them prepare for assessment centers at all these different companies. And I find that really found that really easy to do. And in fact, I think when I was at that company, I must have wrote well over a million words of content. But the point is, is that writing for me was something that I knew absolutely that i found it easy also because people would come and ask me to help them to do stuff that's also another thing if people are coming to ask you like people say oh can you look at this can you help me to write this and i would redo it or edit it or whatever i was doing and people would sort of say holy cow that's amazing but to me i was like meh like i've got a friend who's a really good engineer he's really good at fixing stuff and whenever he fixes things like he might uh fix a car or fix something that's electronic and when I see him do that, it's almost like magic. But the truth is he loves it. And to him, it's easy. To me, it's just kind of baffling. The fourth bit of advice, which is a little bit contrarian, particularly if you're a graduate and you're watching this about sort of going on and having your first job, your first career. And it came from one of my mentors who, um, God bless his soul, he's dead now. He was a guy called Keith. At the time when he gave me this advice, it was... About eight years ago, so what am I, I'm 34 now, I was 26 then. And I was really pleased, I'd got a job at this company which I was later on to leave and I did a five year stint there. And I sat there and I told Keith, we were you know, meeting amongst some uh, family members. I told Keith about the job and I was really excited. And he was normally very positive. He was, he was very calm, a real British gentleman. And he turned around to me and he said, um, few people ever get rich working for someone else. I was like, huh, okay. And Keith would say something to me often and I would need to go away and process it. It would take me, and it took me five years. It was actually going through that company, helping them make lots of money, not getting equity and leaving that company that made me think, huh, yeah, I'm not gonna get rich working for somebody else. At least not in terms of the things that I wanna do and the way that I want to do them. So I guess that's something to remember. And particularly if you're watching this as a student, it's a great time to get online, to create a side hustle. You know, if you're watching this and you're a designer, go and design, go and knock out cheap designs for people. If you're a marketer, go and do some social media stuff, some marketing, like the internet is absolutely fantastic. If you guys haven't watched Gary V, I can't imagine many people who haven't watched him, but for me, he was a real inspiration in terms of just saying, look, just try, just do even when it kind of gets really hard. Those are my four best pieces of career advice. I'm going to drop links to those articles and books down in the description. And I hope that helps some of you because it definitely changed my life and helped me to change other people's lives. Bye.